We know we have our friction factor equal to 0.4 that was given to us. And then our force sliding. So this is the demand side of things. This is the amount of force that's trying to push our cantilevered system out of the way um, and cause, cause mayhem and cause problems. That is equal to HA plus HL that we solved for back up above. Well, those equal the following. And added together, they get you 8,224 pounds of force. We don't take into consideration any type of moment arms because we're not doing moment anymore. We're just doing sliding. So we are actually just doing um, from our equilibrium equations, you know, moment F sub X and F sub Y. Sliding is really the check for F sub X. It's like you have your system and you have some amount of force pushing this way. Do you have enough amount of force um, to resist that force pushing on your system? And the way that we counteract that force, Fs, one of the ways typically is through friction at the base interacting with the soil that it's bearing on. And the way that you get a value, a horizontal value, is by taking the, the weight that's bearing on that soil and timesing it by some friction factor. So the coarseness um, or amount of like stickiness of your structure interacting with that soil. You get different parameters. Usually it ranges from like 0. I don't know, 0.25, that's like a super low one, to maybe up to 0. 0.5. They're typically 0. 0.35 to 0. 0.4. That is something, if you're not a geotechnical engineer, if you're a structural engineer, uh, you get that information from the geotechnical engineer through usually a geotechnical report that is written prior to the structural engineer designing the structure. Well, what is our resisting force? F sub R can be equal to F sub F, which I'll call force of friction. And that is equal to 0.4 times your summation of your weight. This is your friction factor. That spits out 10,939 pounds. Well, it's greater than F sub S, but additionally, we also have to include a factor of safety per the IBC of 1.5. Factor safety equals FR over SF, uh, FS, and that gets us 1.33, so that is less than 1.5, so we are actually no good. And you're like, crap, are we gonna go back and size things up? This problem is already getting too long as it is. Pump the brakes, there's actually additional uh, material that we can grab onto to help with this calculation. So additionally, I'm gonna scroll up the top here. While we just used the friction to resist sliding effects, we also have this key down here, and this is gonna be known as a shear key. And what this helps do is resist sliding because we can now take passive pressure, which is some amount of force that's, that's cause you have soil on the other side of your retained structure, that doesn't, that exists. So if you're gonna to try to push the structure, well, that soil that is on the other side of it, even though it's lesser in height, also needs to get pushed out of the way. And that's gonna have some additional force to help resist your sliding forces. So we actually have this going on right here. We're only gonna take it to the top of our base. And now um, a little, another little tip for you. Typically you have soil above your your retaining structure base, but a lot of the time you, depending on the height of it, if it's one foot, two foot, whatever, you don't include that top bit because you could assume over time that it scours away. Um, it gets, you know, people forget about the parameters that this thing needed to be constructed to. And over time they excavate a little bit in front of it or whatever. And uh, you don't want to necessarily rely on that, that kind of that topping soil just in case if it's not there in the future. Little trick of the trade there for you to keep track of, but obviously for stuff like that, talk with your principal, talk with your project manager if you're getting into that kind of stuff. But this, let's find this value here, which is simply 450 PSF times that height, which is 4.5 feet. That gets us 2,025 PLF. Man, that's a big number. 
Passive pressure is very, very strong. It's very helpful in, uh, in structural engineering. So FR, we're gonna rewrite our equation from this one up above, is equal to force of friction plus also force passive. Force passive is equal to big HP, just like if we scroll back up here, we solve for big HA and big HL, but we also have big HP, which is the sum of that distributed load down there. Big HP is equal to the following, the triangular distribution, so we divide by two, and that gets us 4,556 pounds. You may think we're done here, but there's one change we need to make that uh, is often, well, not often overlooked, but I think it's something that uh, I had to learn throughout my time, is since we are now utilizing this passive pressure, which we're taking to the bottom of the key, we also need to adjust our demand. So our FS force, our sliding force, um, down to this elevation. Because before we were only taking it to the base, um, the bottom of our base, because we were summing about A. Well now, since we're utilizing more soil to help us, because we need that passive, we proved that just friction didn't work. We also need to drag down our, all of our demand as well down to that point. Otherwise that wouldn't be fair. You can't just go really deep on one side and keep it shallow on the other side and vice versa. It's just not how it goes. So we're adding an additional three feet of depth, and I'm drawing over stuff, to our demand. So I'm gonna redefine H, uh, HA and HL. I'll do that down below right now. All right, our new FS, 10,474 pounds. With a factor of safety, again, of 1.5, F resisting over F sliding equals 15,495 pounds over the 10,474 pounds. That 15,495 is simply your, your friction factor force plus your passive force. And that spits out 1.48, which is relatively 1.5. So from engineering judgment, we are going to say that we are okay here. All right, we're looking good. And before we move on to bearing pressure checks, um, if you are enjoying today's content, make sure to leave a like down below. If I've done something wrong or if you have questions that need more clarification, uh, leave me a comment. That's the best way to do it. I look at all of them. Trust me, I really do. Finding this really informative and helpful, consider subscribing down below. It's totally free. You all know that. Uh, I'd love to see you in here sometime soon. Okay, let's keep going.